Welcome, good evening to you out there. Welcome to today's transmission. My name is Victor Anyate Patterson. Facebook, welcome. YouTube, welcome. And on Zoom, welcome. It's another glorious day that the Lord has made that we should rejoice and be glad in it. He created everything and created us to take charge of it, to nurture it, groom it, make sure that it blossoms. Partially for things to blossom, it depends on both the creator or the manufacturer and the user. The manufacturer will manufacture the thing and give us the guidelines to use it, but it takes the commitment of the user also to make sure that the thing is maintained and sustained. So in our walk with God, he is our provider, he is our sustainer, he is everything, but he has given the authority on earth to man to take care of everything on earth. Actually, in the book of Genesis, you would realize that until human beings, or let me say human was created, God did not allow it to rain because there was no one to take care of the plants because if it rained and it started growing, no one will be there to take care of it. And it was after man was created that God started allowing it to rain. So it means that though God is the ultimate creator, he also has given us, human beings, the responsibility to also be caretakers of that which he created. And it is our attitude towards that which God has committed to us that causes us or would make our environment safe or productive. There are principles that govern what God has created. If I carry a fish out of water, the fish is out of its environment where it will be sustained. The same way, if I block my nose and I'm not breathing in oxygen, give me some few minutes, I'll suffocate and die. So there is the responsibility that is coming from the creator and the responsibility that also comes from the user or the caretaker, which is man. As we look into the word of God, as we ponder over the manual that he gave to us, it is my prayer that today's Bible study would be a blessing to you as it will be a blessing to me. And I pray this evening as we get into the word of God and continue to learn about praying the word of God, you will be nourished, I will be nourished, we will be blessed. And as we apply the word of God, the blessings that comes out of applying the word of God would be our portion. Let's share a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we commit this evening into your hands. We thank you, Lord, that you have made it possible for us to meet on this platform where we would learn the word of God and be blessed of the word of God as we follow and do what the word of God promises. We thank you and we bless you, Lord. I submit my spirit, soul, and body unto you that I would be abased this evening and only Jesus will be glorified. Humble me and let your word come as a double-edged sword to bless, to meet the needs of people that I will just be a channel. Above all, I seek also to be blessed of your word. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. 
Amen. We thank God for this evening and I believe our lives would never be the same. We would be blessed. Amen. Let's look at a scripture from Psalm 119 from the verse number 60. Psalm 119 from the verse number 60. We just want to thank God. We want to bless him in Jesus' mighty name. The Bible says that I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. Let's go on. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. At midnight, I will rise to give thanks to you because of your righteous judgments. I am a companion of all who fear you. I am part of it. I am not left out. Amen. I fear you, Lord. And of those who keep your precepts, the earth, O oh Lord, is full of your mercy. Teach me your statutes. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank God and we bless him for the reading of his word. Look at the verse number 61. Let's go back to the verse number 61. The cords of the wicked have bound me, but I have not forgotten your law. We live in a world that things seem to restrict us from being able to do the will of God. But the Bible is saying, the psalmist is saying here in the verse number 61, that but nullifying the first statement, I have not forgotten your law. So it is the law of God, the word of God, hid in our heart that will cause us to overcome the wickedness that is thrown at us. Life is not easy. Let me put it that way. Because there are forces that work against your life. The enemy of God has now become your enemy because you belong to God. The enemy of good has now become your enemy because you seek good. The enemy of the word of God has now become your enemy because you seek the word of God. But I came this evening to encourage you and to tell you that as long as the word of God does not lie, the truth will always win. So hold on to the word of God. Bless God continuously even in the midst of your challenge. Paul and Silas, when they were put in prison, did not look at the circumstance that was limiting them. They looked at themselves in the eye of God and knew that if they should praise God, whether God comes to deliver them or not, they still, they still would be praising God. Amen. So it doesn't matter. Maybe you are not in comfort. Maybe you're, you, you have pain in your body. Maybe you find yourself looking at tomorrow as a threat because you don't even have a scent or the means to feed yourself. But this evening, remember, you can still praise God. You can still give him the honor because he is your sustainer. Tomorrow is unknown to you, but it's already known to him. So he would prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. So that when the enemy rises up against your life, you would have a reason to thank God and to say, Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I would fear no evil. For you, O Lord, are with me. And your rod and your staff comforts me. It guides me. It protects me. It leads me. It directs my path. When I'm going astray, your word guides me home. When I walk out of the, 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 the protection that you have given to me, Lord, your love and your word brings me back so that your protection will cover me. So this evening, according to the mercies of God, the bountiful mercies of God, we should have been dead because of the sins we commit. We should have been punished because of the bad things we do. But his mercies have been abandoned towards us. Some seek for power and they do not seek for the most powerful God. What is power if it is not connected to the most powerful one? Because he holds all in his hands. The Bible says that he is all in all. I am is his name. 
It doesn't matter what you bring before him, he becomes that. That is why his name is El Shaddai. And yet his name is Jaira. And yet he is our banner. He is Nisi to me. He opens my eye to see into his word and to understand his love for me. So he could come in the form of a man to die on our behalf. So open your mouth this evening. Let us praise him. Let us thank him because he he Lord, is our thank sustainer you. he has kept us wow. i am kept by the power of god i am protected by the word of god because his rod and his staff comforts me wherever you are thank the lord bless him for life bless him for his goodness for his love and kindness his mercies for they are new every morning and great is his faithfulness open your mouth let us love him open your mouth let us bless him open your mouth and glorify the name of the king of kings and the lord of lords he is worthy of all praise and worthy of all honor yes father we give you praise we give you glory this evening we honor your name for if you had not been on our side who would have protected us who would have kept us who could have sustained us and provided for us we couldn't have provided for ourselves but lord you are our provider because of that we would praise your name you are our protector because of that we will call upon your name when lord we are in we need all have plenty to eat we give you praise this evening we give you glory because you are not like them you are our rock you are not like their rock because you are god almighty you are yahweh you are you are el shaddai elohim is your name and we give you praise this evening we give you glory because you love us and so much you lay down your life for us what is man that you are mindful of him the son of man that you even think of us we are so valuable to you you exchange our life yes our death you took our place because we are so valuable if someone should ask me how valuable are you who do you think you are i will tell you that i think i am worth the death of jesus christ that is the value that you put on me so i thank you and i bless you i give you praise this evening join me let us thank the lord join me let us praise him join me let us glorify his name for he is good and his mercy endure it forever if you are alive it means that God still, still has a purpose, an unfinished business for you on earth. And because of that, you can praise him. Because of that, you can glorify him. Because of that, you can give him all the glory that is due to his name. Father God, we give you praise. Abba Father, we give you glory. Abba Father, we thank you. Abba Father, we glorify you. Abba Father, we hallow your name. Let your will be done in our lives and let your will, your kingdom come and manifest through us in the name of Jesus. So we give you praise and we give you glory. In our weakness, Lord, you are made, your strength is made perfect. In our weakness, your grace is sufficient. So we give you praise and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that you keep us. Our going out and our coming in is ordered. Our steps are actually ordered by you and we give you praise and we give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you that we are so worth your you, you thinking about us you even have numbered the hair on our heads uh, in the mighty name of jesus we give you praise uh, and we give you glory we thank you for your love that is shown towards us we thank you for the glory that you have endowed us with that the glory of this earth is not every beautiful thing on earth cannot be compared to the human being because we are made in your image we are made like you we are made just like you in the name of jesus so we thank you for even sharing who you are with us we give you praise this evening and we thank you we glorify your name in the name of jesus so open your mouth and thank him open your mouth and love him open your mouth and glorify him he is worthy of all praise all praise not ours alone but the plants will praise him the birds will sing to him even if we shut up the bible says that he can turn stones and cause them to give him praise in 
Jesus' mighty name. So open your mouth and give him praise. Don't let any rock out praise you. 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 In the name of Jesus. So we give you praise. We give you glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for honoring us. We thank you, Lord, for, for providing for us. We thank you, Lord, that we are not in on a sick bed. We are not, oh Lord, hindered. But Lord, our lips will give you praise. Our tongue oh, will be used to lift up your name and to glorify your name. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and we give you glory. We lift you up high above every other thing in our lives. Our provision Lord is hid in you. We are who we are because we are hid in Christ. Thank you Lord. Whoever we are, we are it because of Christ. And we thank you and we bless you this evening. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you Jesus and thank you for answered prayers. We thank you for blessing us. We thank you for keeping us and sustaining us in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us take a few minutes and let us pray for leadership. Yes. Let us pray for leadership. It is said, I'm just paraphrasing, that everything would rise and fall around leadership. If, if the leader does not do the right thing or take the right decisions, all the followers will go astray. The Bible says that if the blind leads the blind, they would fall into a ditch. So the leader should know the direction they're going. They should have a vision. And if the vision is not of God, we would be working contrary to God. So we want to pray for leadership. We want to pray for pastors. We want to pray for bishops. We want to pray for archbishops. We want to pray for any person who stands in a place of authority. When I say a place of authority, you are talking about the husband, the wife, a senior parent, uh, someone who takes care of somebody, the teachers, uh, uh, presidents, ministers, all of them stand in a place of authority. Amen. And leadership. Amen. So we want to pray for them. At every given time, when your time comes and you stand in the place of leadership, that the Lord will grant you the wisdom to make the right decisions. Amen. Amen. That the Amen. Lord will grant you the wisdom because every human being at a particular time is acting as a leader. Yes. It's acting as a leader. The word of God says that the man is the head of the house. When the man is not around, who is the head of the house? The two shall be one. The woman, the wife, takes over the leadership. So at that particular moment, should somebody bail, and the wife did not make the right decision, though the husband is the head and is away, whatever would have gone wrong would have gone wrong in the house. That is the reason why we have to pray for leadership. And when we say leaders, don't just... Think of someone who sits on top there and makes decisions or tells you what to do. Think about yourself also as a leader, the role you play, wherever you find yourself. When you send your child to school, the teacher becomes the leader there to instruct your child, to pour into your child. They spend more time even in the school than they spend in the house. So you can imagine if you don't pray for leadership and you don't pray for people in authority, an example is the teacher that teaches. When your child is on the way to school, he or she is a leader leading herself or himself. Any decision that he or she takes along the road before he or she gets to the school is vital. Amen. Amen. So we want to pray for leadership. We want to pray that in the moment that we find ourselves walking in the place of leadership, that we would download the mind of God and follow the spirit of God and not our own thoughts. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's pray for leadership in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes, pray that Lord, God would be our guide. Pray that by the word of God, we Father, would be ordered. Our steps will be ordered. Pray that God would be our leader. That in everything that we do, though we are leading physically, we will connect to the source to receive instruction so that our leadership will be a leadership that is connected to the leadership of God in the name of Jesus. He is the ultimate. He is the supreme. But 
any at every given time you as a human being you lead somebody you direct somebody you speak into somebody's life may the lord grant you that wisdom may the lord grant you that grace in the name of jesus open your mouth and pray for leaders pray for pastors pray for presidents pray for ministers pray that the lord would be the one instructing them and that they will not be directed by their feelings or by, by their greed or selfishness that the lord will cause selfless leaders to stand in the place of authority in the name of jesus hallelujah whoever leads you if the person is blind you are going nowhere to happen may the lord grant us grace may he grant us understanding into these things in the name of jesus lord we commit leaders into your hands we commit pastors into your hands we commit bishops into your hands we ask in the name of jesus that your grace will be sufficient for us your grace will be sufficient for us in the name of jesus we ask oh lord that them that are going through one challenge or the other suffering infirmity lord that you would heal them lord that you would touch them lord that you would take them out of the pain in the name of jesus and lord glorify yourself in their lives in jesus mighty name open your mouth and thank the lord open your mouth and bless the lord for leadership open your mouth and glorify the lord for leadership in the name of jesus because god is the ultimate leader and if we follow god we are going to be successful in jesus mighty name hallelujah amen and success is not just having more but fulfilling your purpose at a particular moment and your god-given purpose if i came to a place to eat and i do not eat and i ended up bathing i have not fulfilled my purpose so that is that is what purpose is about god created us to do something on earth if i end up doing so much of something that god did not design for me to do i have wasted my time because if god sent me to go and eat and i bathed drank water did everything and did not eat god will not judge me based on the bathing the drinking of water and all of the other things i did He's waiting for me to do the right thing. And the right thing is to do that which he sent me to go and do. Amen. Amen. So if, if your television, it is good, it's a television, but you are using the screen as a computer screen. Though you are, it is serving you, you are not using it for the purpose for which it was created. Or made. <laughs> I hope we understand what I'm talking about. So let us pray that our purpose will not be thwarted. Our purpose will not be messed up by any leader in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because Amen. sometimes, uh, I, I, the quote of the day, I, I put the quote of the day today, and I said that following success, you have to be sure that the success that you are following, the vision that you are following is connected to your vision. Because if the, the car is going to Amsterdam, and you, you are going to Utrecht, and you join that bus, you have missed your target. Though you are in a car. Amen. So we Amen. want to pray that God will grant us the grace for us to discern where we are, what we should follow. Success is not uh, the glamour you see out there. Somebody could have enough, more, you know, build mansions and all of that is all over television and wouldn't have fulfilled purpose. Wouldn't have fulfilled purpose. Having a lot of material things doesn't mean you, you are successful. Have you fulfilled that which God brought you on earth to do? That is the most important thing. And when I'm saying this thing, your mind is like, oh, ah, the person has it all. No. What is all? When what God brought you here to do, you have not even touched it. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you, Lord, for purpose. You yes, do nothing Lord. but for your purpose. You even grace us to be able to do that which you sent us to go and do. So, Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that as we, O oh Lord, humble ourselves under your word, may your word equip us, yes. cause your spirit to help us to discern that why yes. you brought us here, why you have connected us together, and Lord, above all, help us and grace us to be able to fulfill it. Whether there is a frustration or not, may we be able to fulfill our purpose on earth. Yes, in God. the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and we bless you. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Welcome once again on Facebook, on YouTube. What we are doing is a Bible study, so you can ask questions in the chat. I will turn on my WhatsApp chat also. So if you want to ask a question, you can also send a quest question to my WhatsApp. The, 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 the information is will show up on the screen so that you'll be able to send it to it. You can ask any question. We will interact and make sure that by the grace of God, whatever the Holy Spirit leads us into, I don't know it all. I'm not saying I know it all. I don't know it all, but the Spirit of God will help us by the guidance of the Word of God so that we would have answers to all the questions that will come in. Amen. So if you have any Amen. question, don't hesitate to bring your question. The Lord will help us to do business with it. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Last week we finished with uh, relationship that is trying to get into deeper relationship with God and restoring of relation, broken relationship with God and the type of prayers that biblically you have to pray. Sometimes we pray amiss. Sometimes we pray amiss. You know why? Because out of the situation we find ourselves, instead of going to the word of God and seeking the mind of God concerning the situation, we start responding. And we respond from the fleshy part of us, our emotions. Amen. So, for instance, somebody makes me angry. Then, instead of me taking my time to ponder over what, is, what has happened, and to see if it is something that is rather to build me up and to help me grow in the Lord, I wouldn't. Then I will start also responding just as the person responded, to, gave it to me. And then I mess a lot of things up. One, I mess the relationship with the person. Two, I mess the relationship with God through me because the Bible says that we should forgive. And do you know the number of times we should forgive in a day? 490 times the particular person one person does you wrong the person should do 490 times in one day and till the 491 that was that is when you even have a choice but from zero till 490 you should keep forgiving the person is it easy or not <laughs> It's not easy. So it means that we need the grace of God. We need the word of God to help us, to strengthen us. We need everything that God has prepared to guide us. God knows that you would be hurt. God knows that somebody will step on your toe. God knows that someone will lie concerning you. God knows that you will be gossiped about. Yet he allows it to happen. One, that his glory will be seen. That you would pass the test. Do you have his word grounded in you enough so that you would use his word instead of using your emotions? So as we study the word of God, I pray that God will help us. Because sometimes it's so painful. You wish you could just be yourself, be, you know, the old man and do some things so that whatever can come, can come. But when you look at the grace of God, when you look at even Jesus, the last day, that is what I do. When somebody does anything, I'll say, have you even died for anybody before? Then I answer myself, no. Did the one who come to die for all humanity, was he insulted? I say, yes. What did he do? He said, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. So then I also put you in that basket. This one does not know what he or she is doing. Lord, help me to overcome this thing. It's not easy. I don't know why I'm talking about forgiveness. It's not easy, but when you do it, you would see that it gets to a time. Somebody does worse things than you have experienced in the past. You don't even blink. It's like mm -hmm. you just look at the person. You're like, mm. Mm. forgive them. For they do not know what they are doing. Amen. Amen. And that is maturity. Applying the word of God. 
Amen. It is the word of God does not promise us only roses, flowers, and goodies. No, 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 no. He says that he, he all of this plus persecution. Plus persecution. So whilst you think God should bless you, the blessing comes with persecution. Even when you are driving your own car, when you have your own shoe, you are wearing it. Somebody looks at you and say, hey, look at his face. He thinks the shoe is nice. <laughs> Meanwhile, you, you have not done anything. You know? So that is how it is. So the blessing attracts. And it does not only attract compliments. It attracts people who are coming to eat from the blessing. One. And it attracts people who would also condemn the blessing. The same thing attracts someone who is envious of you and jealous of you and thinks that why should it be you and not him or her. But they are forgotten what you went through or what you have done with God. They don't want to do it. But they want to share in the, in the, in the, in the blessing. Amen. You can be good and give them a portion of it. But sometimes you, when you are even giving to them, they are asking, is that all you can give? May the Lord have mercy on us. Amen. So we are talking now about prayer. And the reason why I'm talking about a little bit about forgiveness is because today we're going to deal with three points on prayer for the needs of other people. For the needs of other people. Scripturally, it is, does the Bible teach us to pray for others? And what does the Bible teach? And which type of prayer can you pray for somebody? I cannot pray the salvation prayer for you. It doesn't matter how anointed I become. I can become Jesus, which I cannot. It's like some, when some people are arguing, they say, if I was God. If you were God, you would do the same thing God does. Because you cannot do any other thing apart from being God. So don't even think if you were God. You cannot be God. Amen. Amen. But the point is that if you had your way, how would you respond? But the word of God will direct us. Amen. So we are going to learn scripturally how to pray for other people's needs. Amen. How to pray for other people's needs. And sometimes you would think, oh, um, who falls under that category of other people's needs? Your enemy is your first target. Yeah, your enemy is your first person you have to pray for. Your enemy. I always say this to the church that if we are able to convert all of our enemies, what do they become? They become brothers and sisters. So no longer enemies. No. So, so your first target should be the, the one you think, oh, this one does not like me. That one does not like me. That one. Pray for them. Pray for them so that God would open their eyes mm. to see what you see. Amen. Amen. Be because out of the blindness and ignorance that they live in, they see you as an enemy, though you don't see them as an enemy. So you pray for them. Amen. You pray Amen. for them. You pray for your immediate family. You pray. Don't, sometimes we are even quick to pray for ourselves. Don't forget, I always say this also, a pipeline that delivers water is also being watered. So whilst you are praying for others, you are indirectly praying for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You are indirectly praying for yourself. <laughs> the Bible says that love your neighbor as yourself. So whilst you are praying for your neighbor, the same neighbor or another person is also praying for you. And the prayer that is going out is a seed. And it has to bring forth its fruit. So the fruit it brings forth becomes a blessing to you. Amen. 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 I, I, I say that like when it comes to needs. By the grace of God, I stopped praying for needs. Because when I even desire the thing, 
in my heart. God has a way of bringing it to me, strangely. But that is me. I don't know about you. Maybe you need to go through fasting and prayers and all of those things before it happens. But as long as I, I, I have come to this place, I realize that anything that I desire, that, that I don't desire it because I saw somebody have it. But it's, it's something that I can use to help me in this life that I'm living. God provides it. I don't, I, don't, I don't remember the last time I really prayed that God, give me this, help me. No, no. I only pray that Lord grace me so that I will not miss the target. I will not miss the target. And my prayer for myself is sustenance so that I will be able to reach out to people, so that I will be able to minister well to people, so that God, I will not be a nuisance to people. Amen. So Amen. as we enter into this session praying for others your enemy friends family neighborhood and when we talk about neighborhood you look at what happened what is happening in ukraine and look at how that it's affecting africa so if you are in africa and they tell you pray for your neighbor whom will you pray for togo if for instance if you are in ghana you think togo is your neighbor neighbor Meanwhile, Ukraine is more closer to you than Togo. You know why? They are giving you bread. The flour they bring, the wheat and the, and the oil is what is feeding you. What I mean is that we, we are interdependent on each other. So whilst you pray, as long as when the Holy Spirit leads you into a type of prayer, just follow the leader. Because he is the leader. He knows everything inside out. Sometimes he causes us to pray some prayers into a bank. Waiting for something to happen so that the prayer will meet it. But our disobedience and our rigidity does not allow us to enjoy what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Don't you realize that when the Holy Spirit tells you something and you do it. It even builds up your faith. So Amen. whilst we pray for others that God should bless them, we are being blessed. For instance, if I pray, if I pray that my family, everybody should be self-sufficient, everybody should be blessed, and they get blessed, I will not have to remit money to Africa because everybody is okay. Yes. Then I can use that money to do something else. Isn't it so? Yes, it is but so. if everybody is there begging from you and you are the champiata and you don't pray for them that they should go ahead, what happens is that you become the champiata, but they will always be asking you. Yes. And you will be frustrated, thinking that as for them, they don't they want to work. Some of them want to work, some of them too are lazy. But if you should pray for them and God meets them at the point of their need, you also are relieved of providing physically because God has already provided for them. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Psalm 20, first five verses. Psalm number 20, first five verses. We might read a little further. But we have to bless others. Amen. Amen. Blessed. The word bless is not like God bless you. No. When you tell somebody God bless you, you are telling the person that God should empower you to succeed. That is what the word bless means. Yeah. Being true. empowered to succeed. And su success is also not having more of something. Again, true. success true. is fulfilling your purpose. So you are asking that God should grace them or en enhance their strength so that they will be able to do that which God brought them here to do. And that involves praying for others it involves providing for others it involves also according to matthew 25 35 that we should meet the needs of people who are in need amen, amen. psalm 20 amen. from the verse number one auntie selene are you close to your gadget to read yes please okay would you please help us yes please. psalm 20 verse number one i think we'll get to like the verse number nine Okay. Yes, Pastor. Some no, twenty. Yes. Reading from verse one through nine. 
May the Lord answer you in the day of trouble. Yes. May the name of the God of Jacob defend you. Mm -hmm. May he send you help from the sanctuary <laughs> and send you out of Zion. Amen. May he remember all your offerings and accept your burnt sacrifice. May he grant you according to your heart's desire and fulfill, and fulfill all your purpose. We will rejoice in your salvation and in the name of our God, we will set up our banners. May the Lord fulfill all your petitions. Hmm. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Amen. You will answer him from his holy heaven Amen. with the saving strength of his right hand. Amen. Some trust in chariots mm -hmm. and some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They have bowed down and fallen, but we have risen and stand upright. Nine, save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. Hallelujah. Amen. amen, amen, amen. Thank you for the reading. You see the way the verse is? The person is praying, but the prayer was not directed to himself. But eventually, he comes to say that, save, Lord, may the king answer us when we call. So whilst he was praying, you would think he's praying only for the other party, but he was praying also for himself. Yeah. He was praying also for himself. And this, these are some of the scriptures we should pray. These are some of the scriptures. Like I said in the beginning of this series, if you are born again and you don't know what to pray, look for scriptures. That is why knowing the scriptures should be your primary thing. It should be your primary thing because knowing the scriptures means that you have weapons that you can use. When I say weapons, I'm not talking about you getting into battles. I know, I understand. Somebody will say, oh, for the weapons of our warfare, I understand. I'm not talking about the weapons of your warfare. Mm. I'm talking about weapons when I say, for instance, hunger. The weapon to fight hunger is food. So from that contest, that is what I'm talking about. So you pray for others. Bless others. Bless others. Pray that someone who is in need, if you cannot even provide that need, that somebody would meet that person's need. Yes. Amen. Pray. Bless somebody. Pray that God will call somebody to progress. When we are in a line, and the first three, if I'm on the fourth line, for I'm the fourth person and the first three get saved. Am I not the first one to be saved next? Mm. It's like you have called and they say, yeah, no team worked on the four you. Then you are there. No team worked on the four you. The elder is you are for by. You blind by the team uh, by the twelve. Ah, I will cry. Because the one behind me has now come to pass me and is going ahead of me. That is what this is about. When you pray for others and they progress, you also have the room to progress. Amen. 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 So let's pray for others. Don't think of only yourself. Amen. Every Christian who is self-centered does not evangelize. Does not evangelize. You find it difficult to tell people how good God is. Because you think when they come, God, God has to, you know, the blessing that you are receiving, God has to share it with them. God is over-sufficient. I will not say self-sufficient because self-sufficient, I'm limiting God. He is over-sufficient. He can provide for you and provide for others. So allow them also to come in. Amen. No crabology. When your brother is going up, you, are, you want to pull him down. When, when your sister is going up, you want to pull them down. When they are wearing something and it's nice, give them a compliment. Maybe you also get some. Amen. There are some of the people, when you give them a compliment, then it encourages them to give. They will pass one and bring to you. You too, when they give you a compliment, sow a seed. 
in Jesus' name. Bless Amen. others. Amen. And when we talk about prayer in blessing others, when there is a need, meet that need. If you, in your strength you can. Amen. Amen. For instance, when you look at the prophet Elisha, talking about the prophet Elisha and the widow, whose husband was a prophet, he could have said, this thing is not fair. And, and start to speak things and say, let's go and defend you and let's go and do this. The Holy Spirit was ministering this to me this morning. He said that, but what he did was that he tapped into the spirit and said, this debt thing, it disgraces the name of God. So God, how do we meet it? So God wanted to multiply, but all there was was the oil. And when you look at the culture of the Jews, oil is very, very important. You even have to get oil ready in your house in case you die. Because you need the oil to take care of your dead body. If you go into the Old Testament, you realize that the women need oil for their hair, for their body. So that the Bible says that when you are fasting, don't keep your face dry. Oil your face. And if you don't have oil in the house, what will you do? So it's an essential commodity in that setting. Because they were living in the desert. Everything is dry and dusty. So that was the only commodity that was also sold at a higher price. So what did they do? The prophet said, bring what you have. Now, it could have been that the woman could have said, this thing, if I should bring it, and this man pours it on the ground. Because if it were today's, uh, you know, men of God, we like pouring oil. We like pouring oil. Then, are you coming to anoint me? It's now the, the small oil I will use to do things. You are coming to use it to anoint me. And if you anoint me and nothing happens, so the woman could have also played all of these tricks. But at the end of the day, the debt was paid. And the Bible says that so that you would have enough for your life. You would have enough for your life. It looked very little. But when it was handed over to God, so your prayer of blessings that you would hand over to God will be multiplied. And your brother, your sister, your neighbor would also be blessed. Amen. Amen. Would be increased and you would also be watered. Hallelujah. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The way the amen is it's like you are not sure. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. Okay, sure. so Amen. the next prayer point, now we have to bless people. You understand? Bless them so that their needs will be met. Bless them so that they would increase. Bless them so that they will be sustained. Amen? Amen. The next prayer you can pray is like what is happening in Ukraine. Pray for justice. And the same example is the same thing I've talked about. Elisha and the widow. Some injustice was going on and it took God's intervention for it to be set right. Because her children had been taken away to go and serve, to pay the money. You, you, I don't want to get into it because our children, when they hear this thing, they, will, they, they might start crying. Because living in their comfort zone here, I owe in Africa, then they will come and carry you to go into Africa and go and work to go and pay. That is exactly what happened. And this is a man of God. A prophet's children have been taken to go and work to pay. Amen. Amen. But like what is happening in Ukraine, you pray that justice should prevail. And when you talk about justice, it is not a one-sided thing. So whatever needs to be dealt with, God deals with it, then everybody have, has his peace. Amen. Amen. So Amen. when we are praying, these are some of the prayers we should pray for others. That God's, God will be just to them. That if they are being cheated, God should intervene on their behalf. If they too, they have a big mouth and that is why they are suffering, God should help them to reduce their talking so that they don't get problem. 
and then the one who is subduing them also whatever is causing him to subdue people god should take it out of his life because some people it is just pride and bullying they just want to bully people around because they, they, you know, I'm strong, so I, I see you and move. What are you doing here? Get away from here, you know. Just make you uncomfortable. And that is, sometimes that is how you feel in life. Yeah. But we want to, you pray that people, the weak and the oppressed, will be strengthened. God will be just to them. The justice of God will show up in their lives. Amen. Amen. Because you yourself also need God to be just on your behalf. Because sometimes there are things that happen to you, you know that this thing is not just. You know in your heart that this thing that is happening to you, they are cheating me. But you cannot say anything. Even in the service of God, you know that this thing that is being done, they are cheating me. It is my birthright that is being given to somebody. But you cannot say anything. And you pray that God should, should show just. Sometimes to, it is to humble you. Amen. But you have to pray for others so that God will be just to them. That the justice of God will show up. Amen. Because there are wicked people who want to always oppress others. I have this prayer, I always pray, that peer pressure should not take over our children. Bullying should not take over our children. Sometimes the ch your child is God-fearing, but because of the environment in which the child has landed in school, peer pressure pushes the child to do things that they should not do. May God not allow that to happen. Amen. Not to our children, not to anybody's children. That just wanting to belong, they end up doing things that they should not do. And strangely, the one who normally would, wouldn't have done it, when they go to do it for the first time, they are the ones that are caught. Then it makes it look like they are the evil ones. Meanwhile, the ones who have been doing it all the time are walking free. May God show just on our behalf. May justice prevail in our dealings with others. Amen. May the Lord move ahead of us and any cheating that is ahead of us, Take it away so that we will not meet them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Let's look at Psalm number 10 from the verse number 1. Amen. Psalm number 10 from the verse number 1. Why do you stand afar off, O Lord? Why do you hide in times of trouble? That is the way it sometimes feels. That God is far away. That he has hidden his face from you. The wicked is <laughs> in his pride, persecutes the poor. Let them be caught in the plots which they have devised. Hmm. For the wicked boast of his heart's desire, he blesses the greedy and renounces the Lord. The wicked is in his proud countenance, does not seek God. God is in none of his thoughts. Hmm. His ways are always prospering. That is how it looks. So. Mm. Your judgments are far above. Out of his sight. As for all his enemies, he sneers, he sneers at them. He has said in his heart, I shall not be moved. I shall never be in adversity. That is the wicked though, saying all of these things. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and oppression. Under his tongue is trouble and iniquity. These ones are the gossipers. They are tongue, trouble and iniquity. They can make you seek a rock that the rock should fall on you because of the things they say. The Bible says in the verse number 8, He sits in the lurking places of the villages. In the secret places, He murders the innocent. His eyes are secretly fixed on the helpless. He lies in wait secretly as a lion in his den. 
he lies in wait to catch the poor. He catches the poor when he draws him into his net. This one here, it is like those who give out loan and add some interest because they know that you you need it. So whether you like it or not, you will take it. So the, the terms they will give you, you know that this one, but you need the money also to settle whatever. May you not come to that place when you know that the terms that is being given to you is not the right terms and yet you succumb to it. It is wickedness. It is not justice. May God show you justice. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's look at Psalm 91, the verse number 1 also. Psalm 91, verse number I've read. You can note down Psalm 10. You, if you keep reading till the verse number 15, you see a lot of these thoughts of the wicked man. Because, because it seems like he's cheating people and he, it seems like he's moving forward. He does not even think about God. Psalm 94 from the verse number one. Sorry? 91, 94. I said 94. Oh, okay. I mean, 91. Oh. <laughs> Braille no dot. I need the Braille. So, which is it? <laughs> <laughs> Is what? 91 or 94? <laughs> <laughs> Let's do 91, the first four verses. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then we'll do the 94 also. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Amen. 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 So this is the answer to the previous chapter that we read. So if you are the one that is being oppressed, Psalm 91, the first four verses would be your, your, your relief. Amen? Amen. So let's, let's, let's pick that one. <laughs> Andy Selene, it's yours. Yes, yes, Pastor, yes, please. <laughs> yes, please. Psalm 91, from verse 1 to... Four. Yes. The title of it is Safety of Abiding in the Presence of God. Amen. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I will trust. Surely, he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler mm. and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Amen. Amen. So if you are being tormented, if you are being shown injustice, Psalm 91 says that if you come closer to God and you stay under his covering, he will take care of you. Amen. Amen. He will Amen. take care of you. He will protect you. Amen. 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 So let's look at the 94 <laughs> from the verse number one. Oh, okay. Psalm 94. God, the refuge of the righteous. From verse one. Oh, Lord God, to whom vengeance belongs. Oh, God, to whom vengeance belongs. Shine forth. Amen. Rise up, O oh, judge of the earth. Render punishment to the proud. Lord, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked, how long will the wicked triumph? The utter speech and speak insolent things. All the workers of iniquity boast in themselves. Mm -hmm. They break in pieces your people, O oh Lord, and afflict your heritage. They slay the widow and the stranger and murder the fatherless. Yet they say, the Lord does not see, 
nor does the God of Jacob understand. Mm. Understand? You senseless among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, shall he not hear? He who formed the eye, shall he not see? He who instructs the nations, shall he not correct? He who teaches man knowledge, he who teaches man knowledge, the Lord knows the thoughts of man, that they are futile. Blessed is the man whom you instruct, O Lord, and teach out of your law. Amen. That's, amen. Hallelujah. So you amen. see, you see the way it is. So the, the wicked one, because God is still merciful thinks I have had my way. The same way, God's mercy, merciful salvation would come to the one who is being oppressed. But he's giving room to both. The one who is being oppressed has to pray for the one who is oppressing. And eventually, if the oppressor does not repent, then the judgment of God shows up. Amen. Yes. Amen. Then the judgment Amen. of God shows up. Just like in Psalm 91, you realize that you can pray Psalm 91 even when you, 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 you sense threat. You sense yeah. danger. In your spirit, you are uneasy. Pray yes. it for yourself. Pray it for your family. Pray it for your neighbor. Pray it for the neighborhood you live in. Amen. 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 And pray that people will come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, the Christ. Amen. Amen. Because if that is not done, the whole neighborhood will be polluted with wickedness. And the third prayer you do is intercessional prayer. You see that all of these ones look like they are intercessional prayer because you are praying for somebody. But I mean you can get into intercessional prayer particularly for particular things. One, for somebody's salvation. Two, for somebody's deliverance. Three, like last week, we're interceding for people's health. Yes. When we're fasting and praying, we're interceding for people's health. And many are the testimonies. Amen. Sometimes I, I, I'm like, oh God, this is good. It feels good to know that when we pray, you hear. And I know Amen. other people are praying for the same people, but I know that my, my prayer is what God had. Amen. And I know that your prayer is what God had. Amen. And me, I, like I always say, God loves me more than any Amen. other person on earth. I don't Amen. know about you. I thought you would say, oh, me too. Oh, God loves me more than... The, the way you are laughing is like you are affirming my own. No. <laughs> Amen. So when, when you pray, remember that God is a prayer answering God. Amen. Yes. He answers prayer. Like mm. the scripture was saying, he who made, who planted the ear, yes. will he not hear? If he created your ear and your ear can hear, do you think he, he does not have an ear? Yeah. Yes. So don't think he does not hear you when you pray. Yeah, louder. You know, sometimes we have to make this, this the, the, the word of God so personal. Amen. Yes. And the, 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 like the writer is saying, he who planted the ear, does he not hear? I can mm. even pray it, Lord. In this situation, mm. I can hear. So I know that you would hear me. Mm. Intervene in this situation. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Amen. Intervene yeah. in Jesus' name. Amen. And if you pray scriptural prayers, it is like carrying God's promise and rolling it over to him. Now you talk amu. Mm -hmm. Don't disgrace us. So. Oh. Don't make them laugh at us because we depend on you. Amen. And, and when you bring back his word to him, that is what makes sense to him. Not mm. your emotions. No. Sometimes our emotions carry us away and we, we, we talk some things that we should not even talk. No. We even come no. and pray that our mothers are witches and wizards so, and our fathers are wizards so they should die. 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 And they die, you, you don't have money. 
and you are praying <laughs> for your parents who are witches and wizards to die. <laughs> Where would you get money to bury them? Instead of praying for their salvation, you, you are praying for them to die. So you, murder will be on your list. You killed somebody. <laughs> death is death. Whether you prayed for somebody to die or you carried cutlass to cut somebody to die, you have killed the person. Killed. So killed. your sin, they will add murder to it. Killed. And I know in the scripture it says murderers are not going to heaven. <laughs> so which one do you want? Praying for their salvation so that heaven will rejoice. You, you see the way we should play with the scriptures and come to the place of putting our emotions aside. As for the enemy, all you need is for them to repent. Don't kill anybody before their time. Don't become a murderer. Because in the court of God, if on earth murderers are put in jail for life, for life. what about God, who is the righteous judge? Amen. 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 So let's talk about intercession. Colossians chapter number one from the verse number nine to three. It's three. We're just dealing with three verses. And then I would, let's see if we have, yeah. So with a few minutes we have, I would want us to use today to almost finalize if the time allows. I want us also to pray scriptural prayers on the character of God. The character of God. Amen. So let's mm -hmm. first look at Colossians and then we'll come back. We'll continue there if the time allows. It's already 10 after the hour. So. Colossians. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 9 to 12. 9 to 12. Yes. Colossians 1. Yes. From verse 9. Yes, ma'am. For this reason, we also, since the day we had it, do not cease to pray for you mm -hmm. and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you may walk worthy of the Lord, mm -hmm. pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work yes. and increasing in the knowledge of God. Amen. 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 Strengthen with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the life. He Amen. has delivered us from... You are, you are 12, so you're done with 12. It's okay. Thank you. Oh, thank so here you, you see that it is a Christian praying for other Christians. Amen. So that they will live according to the word of God. The same way you can intercede for somebody's salvation. Amen. Amen. You can intercede for somebody's salvation. You know, some people, it, it's like they become a rock, unmovable. They don't want to move any direction. You ask them, uh, what do you worship? I don't worship anything. Me, I'm there. I'm going, I'm going nowhere to happen. And such people are the ones that they don't say there is no God and they also don't want to worship him. At least if somebody is saying there is no God, you know that the person is a fool. That's what scripture says, so it's not yes. me. Amen. But if someone does not come out to say there is no God, and yet does not want to worship him, then you see the person is in the place of a decision making. And yeah. it takes our commitment as believers to pray for them. Carry the person into prayer. Pray until, you know, th this kind of intercession is not, not just blessing them, but praying until you see the change. Amen. Amen. You pray for the person until you see the change. Amen. Amen. It's the same thing with, you know, because sometimes also in the church, like the uh, Colossians is talking about, that they would live like 
the light that they are in. In the church, somebody will be in church for years. Just the understanding of giving is trouble. They want everybody to give to them, but they don't want to give. Strangely, that is how most of the people are. The ones who are not givers, they want people to give to them. If you don't give to them, they get offended. Even when they see you giving to others, they get offended. It's like, yeah, why should you give? But we want to, you, you have to come to the place where we pray for such. Because it is difficult for you to be in water and not get wet. Very, very difficult. So if you have been in the church so long and the word of God is being taught, unless it's not being taught, and my, our archbishop will say that if the church is not changing you, change church. Because maybe the word they are preaching there cannot help you. And some people too, it is not the, the word that is not changing them. They are like Osuabrobos. It's like pouring water over rock. The water does not move the rock. The rock is just there like that. Unmovable, unshakable. It doesn't matter what you say. We will come to church, but we have heard we will not do. <laughs> we have come. It's, it's like a lot of, you know, a lot of people I see around, <laughs> they will come. They will shake. They will dance. No change. From the church, Kofi Kinata said it. The same ones that went to the disco are the same ones that came to the church. Amen? Amen. So we have to intercede for such. We have to pray for them. And you don't pray. That one is not so, 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 so prayer. It's prayer intensive intercession. Where the Holy Spirit might even lead you into groanings. Where you, you, you sincerely desire that there should be a change. Oh. Amen. There should be a change. Okay. And the, the, the last days, my desire now is that people should love the word of God. Because it is only the word of God that will, that will save us. It is only the word of God that will save us. It is not about money or things. As for the things, you would buy, 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 buy. Some of them you will never wear before you pass on. But there should be the love for the word of God that will yes. change us from inside out. Yes. And if yes. we love the word of God and it changes us from inside out, this world we live in will be different. Oh. It will be different. If you love your neighbor, would you carry a gun and go and shoot the person? No. Would you just... In, in, <laughs> Cause the 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 whole the whole country to come to a standstill. Children are are being dispersed all over the place because you just want to show power. No, that is not the right way. Amen. Amen. So we should love our neighbor. And on this note, I want us to pray for Ukraine. Pray for Russia. They are the major you know situations that we have now. And even today in the news, I heard they were saying they are afraid an euro crisis will happen. Where the economy would go down. They are afraid because all of the signs that happened in 2000 and I think 20, 2012 are showing up again. Inflation, prices are going up, fuel prices and all of those things. All the signs are showing again. So we want to pray that, and now we are, we are carrying the axe to the root of the thing. We are not dealing with the branches. As for, the, as for all the, the prices that have gone up, we know they have gone up. But the problem is down there. Amen. If there is peace there, the farmers can go to farm. They have taken over a port city where the, the Ukrainians could have shipped all of this wheat and flour to us. The oil and stuff. Look at the prices of cooking oil in the shop. So we want to pray for peace in that, in that place. That God's justice will show up. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. according to the scriptures that we have read this evening, when God's justice shows up, he balances the equation. Amen? Amen. He balances the equation. None will be cheated. The wicked will be paid. The suppressed and oppressed will also be paid. Everybody's currency will come to them in Jesus' name. So I want us Amen. to lift up our voice this evening. And we, we are going to pray and ask God to intercede. Oh, yes. Intervene, I mean. To yes. show up. That angelic forces will show up and stop this war in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Open your mouth. Let us pray for Ukraine. Oh, Open your Father, mouth. Let us pray for Lord, Russia. Lord, Open Lord, your mouth. Let us ask for Lord, God's Lord, intervention. Lord, let us Lord, ask that God would stop this thing in Jesus' mighty name. We cannot sit here and think it's okay. Corona has come to lock the whole world down. And now we are going to go hungry. No. In Jesus' mighty name. Open your mouth. Let us pray for, for, for Ukraine. Open your mouth and pray for Russia. Because there are people living in Russia that are also suffering now. Because of the lack of food. Let us pray for them in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Open your mouth and pray in Jesus' mighty name. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. Yes, in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Oh, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Intervene, O Lord. Intervene, O Lord. Intervene, O Lord. Intervene, O Lord. Grant wisdom. Let love overshadow all of the faults and the multitude of sin in the name of Jesus. We give you praise and we give you glory. Lord, intervene, 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 intervene. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes, in the name of Jesus. Intervene. Oh, look unto the suffering of children. They are being oppressed, Lord. Show mercy. Let mercy. Let mercy. Let mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, let your mercy. Let your mercy show up. Let your mercy show up. In Jesus' mighty name. That peace will reign. Makato kabaya dadadas. Mredo satayanda ni mriya katala brando zobaya. Hey, yabala bala bala bas. Mredo skatapayando lobo zembre ndege ni manamaya. Hey, yamakata yada brando zomo yende debe debe debe. Set free them that are bound, O Lord. Let your justice reign. Makato kolobo zonde lebiri yakata. Hey, Yamakato Lebrende Genima Nama Sukaya Dadabaya. In the name of Jesus, Malo de Genima Namakaya Dababa. In the Labazon de Debedi Yakata Labrande de Bede Bede Bede. Also, anyone who is being oppressed, Lord, set them free from that oppression. It could be an addiction, Lord, set them free. It could be, Lord, sin that has held them bound. Set them free in the name of Jesus. Any form of oppression. We break the back of the strong man in the name of Jesus. Lord, we intercede for them that are not saved. Them, O oh Lord, we ask, O oh Lord, let your saving power reach them. Even in Ukraine, even in Russia. Provide food for them that are hungry. Clothing, O oh Lord, for them that are cold. Oh, Preserve lives. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. Amen. So if you are not born again and you've been watching us, I want to give you the opportunity to confess your sins. Like we're saying in the beginning, I cannot pray salvation prayer for you. I can pray for you that the Lord would cause you to be saved. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing. You have heard the word of God and I believe faith has arisen in your heart. Jesus came for you and for me. Thank God I have stepped into the kingdom. And you ought to also step into the kingdom. Amen. It is Amen. only you confessing your sins and declaring that Jesus died for you and he is Lord. And you submit your life to him that you become saved. Amen. 
then okay. you know your eternal destination because then you would belong and live with him forever and ever. If you are such and you say, I want my sins to be forgiven. I want that you pray for me or pray with me. If you are such, let us pray this prayer together. It is your prayer I'm helping you to pray. So believe that whatever prayer you are repeating after me is your own prayer and your own conviction. And that after this prayer, you would be convinced by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God will bear witness with your spirit that you, you have become a child of God. Say, Lord Jesus, thank you for your word. I have heard that I cannot save myself. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from any wrong that I've done. Lord, help me. Forgive me, Lord, and accept me into your kingdom. And help me to live a kingdom life. Strengthen my hands to walk this Christian walk. To walk this believer's walk. I believe you are the son of God. And I believe you say you died for me. As you have forgiven me, I step into the kingdom as a child of God. And I believe I am saved forever. Amen. If you pray Amen. that prayer, you are born again. You are a believer. You believed in the word of God and you have prayed and confessed the word of God. Look for a Bible-believing church. Our church activities on Sunday will be receiving a visiting minister. I, 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 want, I pray you would show up so that you'll be blessed as never before. Amen. Amen. Invite somebody. Call somebody. If anyone does not like going to church, the one who like this one. Amen. So call Amen. somebody, tell them that, hey, come to Perez Chapel, Almira. If you live in any of the neighborhoods there, Cadus, in the centrum, just by like five minutes walk from the central station. If you get to the central station, you cannot find your way. Just send us a message or call the telephone number on your screen. We would come pick you up. Remember, if you are a youth and you want to study the Word of God, we have our online Bible study on Saturdays from 6 to 7. It is question and answer. You can ask questions. You learn how to have a quiet time. You learn how to study the Word of God. Your life will never be the same. Join us as we study the Word, leave the Word, and become like the Word that we study. Search for us on YouTube. Victor Anyete Patterson, like it and sub subscribe so that when we come live, you would have the notification so that your life will never be the same. On Facebook also, you can search for Perez Chapel Almira or Victor Anyete Patterson. Also, like the pages that you can follow us as we teach the Word of God, as we share a daily readings. One chapter every day we read, and then also the teams that we are dealing with in the month, you would have encouragement, and you would be committed and connected to God as never before. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause you to be a doer of the word and not he a hearer only. As you have heard the word, prosper according to the word. Prosper Amen. and Amen. become a blessing to many in Jesus' Amen. mighty name. I bless Amen. the Lord for your life. And I thank God that your life is set for God's blessings in Jesus' mighty name. Have a wonderful weekend. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless you too. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you.